What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today, as well as looking into what Netflix reported in terms of their earnings and taking a look at this news that came out regarding the trade war guys. A lot of interesting things are going to be going on in this video, so if you guys do enjoy the content feel free to smash a like it really does help the channel grow and let's get started with today's video so yet again guys today another green day in the stock market the SPX also known as the S&P 500, the 500 largest U.S. traded companies, was up around $20 today, up around 0.76%. We broke that resistance at around $26.20. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes. Very strong resistance there. We broke above that, so we're going to be talking about what levels to look at over these next couple of days in terms of the SPX. But let's take a look at what the other indices did here. We see the Dow Jones had a 162 point day up around 0.67%. This one just like the SPX broke a resistance from the sell off back in October, November and the sell off back in December as well. So very critical resistance broken on the Dow Jones and if we take a look at the Nasdaq here this these are the Nasdaq futures. We ended up doing very well in terms of the Nasdaq as well. Let's take a look at what we did in terms of um you know the market today because this is up a little bit more after hours due to it being a uh, future here we could see that right the market just closed about 18 minutes ago and we do see this pop here which is what we're also going to be talking about in this video this is regarding the trade war but you know all in all today guys the Nasdaq closed the day up around 50 points you know up around 0.7 percent so let's take a look at some major Major resistances here guys and just like the Nasdaq we saw a big spike you know right around 2 p.m. 2 30 p.m. and you know in terms of the major indices and again I'm going to be talking about why this occurred but you know stay tuned for a little bit later on in this video if you do want to find out what did end up happening around 2 30 p.m. but anyway we broke the major resistances in terms of the SPX well just one of the major resistances at around 26 20 we pushed up for a higher high. The uptrending pattern is still intact, guys. We saw a little bit of consolidation yesterday at that resistance, but that was nothing more than just a consolidation step before the next pump up, right? And the news that we got really ended up sending up the markets pretty high today. So in terms of the 20-day, one-hour chart, guys, everything's still looking intact in terms of this uptrending pattern, right? We pulled back. We thought we were consolidating here and potentially reversing to the downside. But at this point in time, this was just a couple of days, right, of break-even pricing in terms of the SPX, you know, consolidation, horizontal movement before we bounced on the 50 SMA here and continued up, you know, in this uptrending recovery pattern that we've been on since around, you know, the, the day after Christmas, December 26th of, um, you know, 2018. So what am I watching in terms of the SPX guys in terms of major resistances at this point? Well, you know, we are right at one at around 2635 right now. We actually had a couple of, uh, I think we had a couple of candlesticks get, you know, rejected by this um, resistance point. If we look a little bit closer on the one day, we can see, you know, it was having trouble getting past this 2635 point as we did end up closing the market, but we did blast by it, you know, all the way up to 2645 when that good news came out, then that fizzled off very, very quickly, and we ended up right at that resistance point. So what am I going to be watching in terms of tomorrow, guys? I want to see if we're going to break this 2635 to 2640 level in terms of the SPX. And honestly, guys, the next point that I'm looking at right now, you know, like I've been talking about in the past couple of videos is going to be on the 180 SMA here, um, you know, for the SPX. And we can notice on the 180 chart, we can see this has been a super strong resistance in the past ever since that sell-off that we saw starting off on October 3rd, right? That massive sell-off that we had. You know, we haven't broken above the 180 SMA since that point. We got rejected here once, 
here once again, and you can consider this point a rejection as well. So if we do end up breaking out of this 180 SMA, guys, this is going to be a reversal for, to the upside for the SPX, right? But if we do end up getting rejected, the continuation of the downtrend is still going to be intact. And we still are technically in a downtrending pattern because as of right now, guys, on the 17th at the close of the market, we are at 26.35, which is technically a lower high from the previous at around 26.75 when we got here at around the, what was that, like the 10th of December. So keep an eye on this level, guys. I've been saying 26.75 is the range that the SPX is going to be around when it's by that 180 SMA and by this previous resistance. So if we do break this level, that's going to be a good sign to the upside, reversal to the upside um, you know, for the SPX. So I'm actually just going to set an alert right now. Why not 2675 on the SPX guys, because I want to get alerted once I, you know, once this does end up breaking this resistance, if it does end up breaking this resistance, I want to get notified. So let's take a look at the Dow very quickly. The NASDAQ will hop into those two articles that I want to talk about. We'll talk about what I traded and then I'm going to end off this video, but let's see what happened in terms of the Dow Jones. So on this 180 chart guys, we had a 162 point day today, meaning that we broke that previous resistance, which was, or rather the previous support, which was now a new resistance since we did break beneath of it, um, you know, back in December. So this was a strong support right around here. It held above it right around here. It held above it back here. It held above it a little bit right here as well before we did break below it, making it a new um, resistance. And then in today's trading session, guys, again, like I said, we were up around 165 points and that ended up pushing us out of that um, resistance. So the next spot, you know, very similar to the uh, SPX guys, we're very close to that resistance at the 180 SMA and at that point where we ended up dropping very drastically back on the 12th of December. This is very similar to the SPX, guys. Take a look at this chart, right? And then take a look back to the SPX. That literally the same day on the 12th, that's when the markets took a hike. So this is where, or a, a, you know, a plunge to the downside, right? This is where the resistance is for the SPX as well as under the 180 SMA. And it's literally the same exact thing for the Dow, right? The resistance is at around 24,800. And that's going to be putting us right under the 180 SMA. So if we do end up getting out of this 180 SMA, which has been a resistance here, here, and here three times in the past, you know, that's going to be a very good reversal pattern to the upside for the Dow Jones. And with all fundamentals wiped aside, guys, like I've been saying in these past couple of videos, let's pretend all fundamentals were wiped aside and the, and the stock market was strictly based on technical analysis. That point right here, guys, literally if we got back into the 25,000 range and we started to break, you know, mid 25,000, maybe back into 26,000, that's going to be a great, you know, that's going to be what we want to see in terms of technicals for a full-on reversal. But of course, in the time that we're in right now, with everything going on, right, you have to take into account what is going on in the economy, the trade war, earnings for companies, you know, Apple cutting sales, China being very, very weak. All of these different things are all going to take a toll on the market, whether it happens next week, the week after, right? Despite what the technicals are showing us now, right? Well, you know, if the technicals break, you know, this level, you know, that doesn't mean that we're heading all the way back up, you know, strictly because we broke this little, um, you know, SMA resistance here. You know, if you guys understand what I'm saying, you have to really incorporate technical analysis and fundamental analysis and really understand what's going on, you know, on the business side, you know, what are companies reporting? What's going on with the trade war? What's going on? in the current state of the economy, all of these different things before making your judgment. And pretty much just the, the, the gist of that, guys, is don't base your judgment on the overall market strictly on technicals. Take in, you know, take into consideration everything that is going on. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, very similar situation. Although it did end up breaking that 180 SMA resistance, we ended up bouncing on the 50 SMA. So in terms of, you know, a reversal pattern, 
pattern right now. You know, the NASDAQ is actually looking the best in terms of a reversal pattern to the upside, right? We broke the 180 SMA resistances, which we haven't done on the Dow or the SPX, you know, we're bouncing on the 50 SMA, we're seeing the cross of the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA, which I talked about in yesterday's video, that's a pretty bullish sign, that's a, that's a sign that, you know, we're pushing up in price, and we can obviously see that based on the 180 chart, but again guys, you know, not, we're not only taking into account what these technicals are telling us. We want to understand the whole picture from a fundamental basis and obviously a technical basis. So, you know, you kind of have to take these charts a little bit with a grain of salt sometimes, but, um, you know, we are, we are doing pretty well in terms of the NASDAQ, right, in my personal opinion. And if we take a look on the 20-day, one hour, we're still holding the uptrend. We pushed to another higher high today, and uh, we're at a resistance right now, as you can see from this trend line, and we can see where that trend line is uh, stemming from. Let me just quickly delete this. Apple, I don't want to update my stuff yet. Leave me alone. You know, who else gets those notifications all the time? And you always click like later, um, you know, wait, remind me tomorrow. I do that all the time. I've been doing that for like the past five, six years that I've owned a MacBook. There we go again. <laughs> remind me tomorrow. But anyway, guys, this is a resistance right around 6785, 67. Um, you know, 50 right around here, which was a previous support that we want to keep an eye on because we're right around that zone right here. And if we do break that, guys, again, that's going to be a very good sign for the NASDAQ. So let's talk about what happened with the China tariffs today and the trade war regarding U.S. and China. And this is why we saw a very big spike in those charts around 230. And let's quickly get into this right now, guys. So as you can see from the article title, well, Wall Street rises on report of U.S. considering to end the China tariffs, guys. U.S. stocks advanced on Thursday as a published report that the United States was considering lifting tariffs on Chinese imports, lifted investor sentiment, guys. Guys, literally this news came out right and look what happened to the SPX at around 230 when this news did come out I know I showed you guys about like five minutes ago but let's take a look again anyway literally it went from 2622 it went up like one percent in the matter of like five minutes right guys and then we saw right as we can see a little bit later on in this article we saw that this might actually be you know, fake news, right? We see here, you know, U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Munich, if I'm saying that right, Munkin, I can't really pronounce that name. Sorry, Stephen. But he discussed lifting some or all of the tariffs imposed on Chinese imports and suggested offering a tariff rollback during trade discussions scheduled for January 30th. So this is what spiked up the markets, the Wall Street Journal reported on Thursday, citing people familiar with the internal de deliberation Operations. Stocks spiked higher after having posted modest gains in the early afternoon trading, though they parred gains slightly after a Treasury spokesman told CNBC that Munich, Munkin, however you say that name, had not made any such recommendation. So is this a hoax, guys? Did this actually, you know, happen, right? You know, we saw this news came out. I think it was via Twitter or something like that. It came, it came out, you know, through the media, right? And drop a comment down below if you guys have anything to add to this. I'm just really curious to see if he actually said this, because if this came from, you know, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, that's pretty huge news, guys. And you can see, you know, we reacted very strongly in terms of the stock market and then once we found out you know i'm guessing we dumped afterwards because we found out that this might not be real news so you know let me know what you guys think about this do you think steven actually said that you know this could be a possibility i think most likely it's a hoax you know honestly i really do think it's a hoax i can't really um you know picture 
us just cutting off the tariffs completely, you know, ending the trade war just like that, right? Just like, it just doesn't make any sense to me, right? But hey, it could be right. Who knows? Let me know what you guys think down below in that comment section. So let's talk about what happened today in terms of Netflix. So I talked about a little bit earlier on in this week that this week is a big week for banking stocks and Netflix was also reporting this week. We saw Bank of America did pretty decent, right? Wells Fargo reported. Goldman Sachs did very well. They went up like 10% yesterday. Bank of America actually did very well. They didn't do decent. I think they did very well in terms of their earnings because their stock went absolutely crazy yesterday as well. But besides that, let's talk about what Netflix did. So Netflix earnings beat revenue misses in quarter four. So in terms of their earnings per share, Netflix did beat. So the firm reported earnings per share of 30 cents on revenue of $4.19 billion. Analysts polled by investing.com expected earnings per share of 25 cents on revenue of $4.21 billion. So they missed out on revenue by about 0.02 billion, but they beat on earnings per share. Pretty solid beat, honestly. They beat it by, you know, if I could do this math on the top of my head, they beat it by around like, what is that, like 10, 15%, which is pretty solid. They beat it by a point, uh, you know, a five cent, uh, pretty much a five cent margin. That compared to the earnings per share of 41 cents and 3.29 billion in the same period, uh, you know, a year earlier. Very, very solid growth, guys. Literally, that's like 20%. 20, 25% growth in terms of the revenue year over year in terms of, you know, uh, what's it called? <coughs> in terms of Netflix. So that was very solid by Netflix, guys. Let me know if you are a Netflix shareholder. And for those of you guys that don't know, Netflix actually hiked up the price of their services, right? A lot of people out there were saying, you know, they, by the way, if you don't know, they hiked it up by a dollar or two for all of their plans. And a lot of people out there were saying, you know, this is not a lot of money, which I do agree, right? It's not a lot of money from the consumer standpoint, but in terms of the business standpoint, guys, I think this is a really huge move, guys, because think about it. If the plan was, let's say, $8, $9, whatever it was, I don't even watch Netflix, guys, to be honest. I don't watch any TV. All I watch is sports on TV, but in terms of like, you know, shows, I don't really watch it, but that's why I don't know the exact price. But let's say it was $8 and they raised it to $10. That's like a 20% increase in terms of their price. And they did this throughout every single service from the low end plan to the high end plan that they have, which is very good guys. Very, very good. This is going to bring a ton of new dollars straight to Netflix. And this is the business plan that they had, right? You know, they started off pretty much offering content, very, you know, very solid content from the beginning, right? They wanted to advertise their originals, right? That's back when Netflix was like six, seven dollars or something like that. Then a year later, two years later, they slowly started to pump up the price. They started flooding more money into, you know, into their, um, you know, original movies, which I think are pretty good from what I've heard. And, you know, this is what they're going to continue to do, right? You know, as they build more brand loyalty, brand equity you know they're going to continue to push the prices and before you know it guys i wouldn't be surprised if netflix was like 20 dollars a month or something like that 20 25 dollars a month in a couple of years and at that point you know netflix is going to make you know be making insane 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 money even though they already are in terms of their um revenue you know four billion dollars that's a pretty big company, guys. That's a pretty, pretty big company. So, you know, I'm very interested to see what Netflix does over the next year in terms of their numbers, how much this price increase is going to affect their business. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. And let's quickly talk about what I traded today on the 17th of January, guys. And I traded Quran. And I credit this 
to, I believe, Eric. Eric shouted Kron out this morning. I wasn't even watching Kron. And, you know, once he shouted it out, once he called it out, I started watching it, and it ended up flying, guys. Kron, I believe CGC did very well today as well, if we can look at the one day. Yeah, it had a similar run, right? These marijuana stocks today, I don't know if it was all of them. Let's see. Kron, I know Kron did because I traded it. Let's see what Tillery did. I doubt Tillery did anything. Actually, you know, it did have a decent run from 83 to 86 i heard neo did very well today neo let's see what neo did yeah neo did pretty well you know from 650 all the way to 690 that's a pretty big move so let's get back to what i was talking about in terms of cron so once eric did shout this one out at around 9 50 a.m guys this actually worked out perfectly to my schedule guys because for all you that don't know, I was kind of inactive in the Discord today, and I do apologize for that because I was actually super busy from around 10, literally from like 10, 1030, right around that time period for the rest of the trading day, right? So if I was inactive in the chat, that is why, guys, I was dealing with other stuff, you know, other things that I'm doing, right, besides trading, and that took up most of my day. But, you know, this ended up playing out very well to my time schedule today. It doesn't always happen like this, guys. You know, if it wasn't for this run, I probably would not have traded today. And if it wasn't for Eric, you know, shouting out Kron, you know, I probably would not have caught it, to be honest, because it was moving very, very quick, as we can see right here. So, you know, we saw that dip down, right, at... 1313 he shouted it out at like 950 or something like that and I wanted to see if it was going to fill this gap from yesterday and this gap meaning that you know the resistance yesterday was at around 1350 when we ended up closing the day we pulled back down you know at around 1315 and that opened up that three 2.5 three percent margin so once we broke the 50 SMA the 180 the EMA we started to trend up and we started to fill the gap you know he shouted it out right as it started started to pop above the gap fill, right? We already filled the gap at this point. And once we broke that resistance, guys, you know, I was thinking Kron is going to run, right? I was thinking Kron is going to run and I slowly started to scale in. I got in at like 1352. You know, I waited, I added a little bit more at around 1365. And then once we started to push up into the 1380s, guys, you know, I wanted to take my profits because at that point we were already at a higher high from the previous day. And if we're judging on the five day five minute you know at this point guys right around 1380 we were at you know right around a resistance from the past couple of days right we can see you know we topped off at like 1390 here you know 1380 we got rejected the pre the day after and then we ended up dumping so i wanted to end up you know selling off my shares at around 1380 1385 so that's what i ended up doing guys my average cost was at around like 1360 or something like that wasn't the hugest trade the biggest trade excuse my grammar hugest is not a word man what what am i thinking it wasn't the biggest trade in terms of uh you know percentage but i'm very happy with what ended up happening so from 1360 guys up to around like 1380 1383 i believe i took it was right around 1.7 percent uh profit and literally guys if it wasn't for the call out, I probably would not have traded today because I would have missed this. I had to go at around 10, 10, 30. And, um, you know, I guess that's what a good, a good Discord group chat's for, guys. We all help each other. I love how it is in there. If you want to join that Discord group chat, the link's down below. We're talking about stocks. We're talking about trading. All that different stuff, you know, every single day. And we just help each other out, guys. That's the whole, and you know, the whole entire idea of the group chat and I absolutely love it and what it has become guys. So that is what, you know, I did today in terms of my trading guys. Let me know what you guys did down below. You know, overall today, it was a pretty good day for the marijuana stocks. Cron and CGC canopy growth did very, very well. We saw a dip today in natural gas. You know, the report came out, ended up dumping out of the report. We're triple, you know, we're, we're making a, you know, a little bit of a, uh, we see the triple uh, rejection here on the 180 SMA for natural gas. So are we heading back down in natural gas? What do you guys think about this? So I'm going to end off the video here. If you guys did enjoy the video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.